Good morning. My name is Goose. I'm a man in long-term recovery. What that means for me is I haven't found it necessary to use any drugs or alcohol since 421 of 2013. <laughs> Welcome to the Using Technology in Oxford House breakout panel. This one is going to be riveting. So we did bring some candy that we'll be throwing out, so pay attention. Uh, just real quick, we have Gary Gardner here, Tim Deal, Jessica Ruiz, and Matthew McFarlane. Uh, a few announcements. Welcome to the 2022 World, or Oxford House World Convention. Uh, make sure you're, you keep your lanyard on with your name badge. This is how we know you've checked in. Um, silent your cell phones during the breakout sessions. Uh, please, no side conversations during the panel. Step outside if you need to. Dispose of cigarette butts properly and safely, no littering. Take, take notes during the session to relay back to your chapter and area, and we will have time at the end for questions. So first up, we're gonna have Gary Gardner. Gary Gardner's sobriety date is October 4th of 2018. His first house was Oxford House, Iroquois? Iroquois Park. Iroquois Park, what he said, in Louisville, Tuck, uh, Louisville Kentucky, where he currently lives. He is the data specialist for Kentucky, Indiana, Illinois, Wisconsin, Ohio, West Virginia, Pennsylvania, soon and soon to be Minnesota. Yeah. So welcome, Gary. Yeah. Thank you all. It's starting to fill up. This is much better because there's going to be some engagement, some crowd participation. It's 8.15 on a Saturday, so... I know you guys, last day in Seattle, you're gonna want something to remember this. So, if you guys don't know, this is being live streamed all around the world. Woo. Times Square, the Vatican, probably. <laughs> so if you would, would you guys stand up, turn around, and wave to the people at home? Thanks, guys. Good stuff. <laughs> and plus, I got you off your feet. So um, I reintroduced myself, um, and there's also some engagement in that. So I, re I, I reverse what everybody says. Um, I'm a person in long-term recovery, and my name is Gary. And I haven't found it necessary to drink or drug since October 4th of 2018. So um, I'm going without a net here. This is, I didn't want you guys to have to read a screen at 8.15 on a Saturday. So it's, it's going to pop. So are you ready to have your minds blown? Yes. OK. Here we go. <laughs> Another screen. <laughs> All right. Right? Right? So. Um, when I first became a resident in Oxford House, um, I immediately didn't drink the Kool-Aid, as they say. Uh, I did not want to be in an Oxford House. Um, I had other plans, you know, get the apartment, get the girlfriend, get the car, and then immediately destroy all of that as fast as I can. And so then after a couple months, I figured, man, this is probably the spot for me. And um, coming close on the time that I took the job with Oxford House, I wanted to do something to contribute to the organization, my family, and wow everybody with my brilliance. So I was going to come up with something. I was going to come up with something that connected us all. This is all a true story. This actually happened. So next slide. <laughs> it's not translating. Here we go. Oh, nope. There's a slight drag. Yeah. It's not like a MacBook. Sorry, I've had this. This is the only way I could practice. I've ruined everything. Okay. There we go. So I thought, what could I do to make an app that would keep everyone specific to their personality, 
but also engage them into a community, a place that you could host fundraisers on the app, you could create groups, um, you could give opinions on stuff, you could share resources, and you could add to these resources. You could give opinions on these resources. And in my mind, you know how that first year of sobriety goes, you have all these grand plans and all these, you picture yourself doing all these wonderful things because that's the way it works. We'd been so far gone for so long, we saw ourselves doing these wonderful things. And with a limited budget, which was about zero, and absolute zero knowledge on how to write code, I started watching YouTube videos on how to do this. And uh, some of these guys can probably attest to this. It's very difficult. It's way further than anything that I could ever do. Uh, but I had a concept, and I had an idea. And I was going to put it to work, and like I said, I was going to wow everybody with my brilliance. And I did it. I thought of something, and that's me. I didn't look like this three and a half years ago. I kind of looked like Charles Manson in that famous perp walk that everybody knows where he has the two federal agents on the side of him. That's what I look like. I'm much taller than Charles Manson, but you get the idea. So anyway, that's me with the idea. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, I created Facebook. 15 years after somebody else did. <clears throat> it's true. It's all happened. It's really happened <laughs> at Iroquois Park. <laughs> Keep in mind, there is a slight drag. Okay. Oh, I also have to say this. If you haven't voted for World Council, I don't know Josh at all. He just happened to be pop up on my Oxford House of Henderson page. I am no, I am not endorsing this man, but he's probably good. I just want to say that he's the only reason why he's on my screen is because I took a screenshot at that time. He just happened to be on there. So, <laughs> anyway, so everybody pretty much knows about Facebook, how it's used, but it is by far, besides of all the trash that might be filtered through Facebook, their servers and the way they're able to connect you to other people is untouchable. So you have groups, you have resources, you see all the things that are there, COVID-19 fundraisers, and even a way to give blood if you need to. And then events, create events, share events, all that stuff, uh, GoFundMe, you see how user-friendly all that stuff is on Facebook. This is probably one of the times I've gotten away from myself. Um, so this is on the larger scale of mobile technology. This is big, okay? Now we're going to, you guys are pretty familiar with Facebook, but we're going to take it down to a house level. Group me. I don't know if any of y'all are familiar with it. Uh, when I moved into my first Oxford house, there was a young man that was really smart. He was going through medical school. When you use a group chat, and some people have iPhones and some people have Androids, sometimes the translation gets jumbled up. It's hard to remove people. It's hard to add people. It gets complicated. With group me, it kind of it uses the basic text system. I'm going to start my cool video, and I have to get my timing down because it goes. So this is Oxford House Potomac, and it, it works on a general chat. But at the same time, you can see we're talking about the electricity bill, and then up at the top right there, you can remove people, you can add people. Group me by far is the best way for guys and girls to communicate inside of a house. So. Also on GroupMe, you can share locations. Like, hey, uh, everybody, let's meet at Sam's Club. And you put it in there. Sharing videos with the new member. All the 60-minute videos we have, the Meredith Vieira, and the, uh, there's my friend Brittany on the last one we made for Amazon Smile. It comes up instantly. You put it on the group chat, and the new member is able to see the 60 Minutes video with Paul Malloy and the young ladies that charge $50 for not cleaning the lint filter in 1988. <laughs> right? So also create events. You have chapter. And all this is fictional. I just was up late making dates up that would work for the time we were together. Um, and then you put a location in. So uh, I learned that sometimes when new members come in, they don't, maybe sometimes they don't get talked to enough. 
and then that chapter thing piece comes around and they're seeing and they're hearing about it, it gives a reminder on the app. Two hours in advance, three hours in advance, they know where they're supposed to be. It's really, really handy. So here's the next one. You can create a poll. So who's that? It was you. So um, you can add files and everything to group me for a reentry application. You can put it on there and you can talk about, you know, review the application. Uh, for my example, I would I put which spice girl is best. Um, and you can add options. And you see I've got sporty and posh, and we all know posh is the best spice girl. Huh? Scary? No. No, sir. No, sir. Anyway, that is group me. I highly suggest you take it back to your house. Next, we're going to talk about on a personal level. So um, what's our number one objective as a person in recovery? Get money, that's right. <laughs> right, stay sober and help somebody. So everybody pull out your phones. But I told them not to have their cell phones. Oh. <laughs> no, you're fine. <laughs> OK, so what you want to do is, like you're going to send a text, put in that top number that's in red. OK. Yeah, I know that number. Left side of the room is going to put in 10001. That is in lower Manhattan, I believe, their zip code. The right side is going to put 33101. That is Miami Beach, Florida. Yes. Send those numbers to the text. So it puts the five closest meetings to you in that zip code. Yes. <laughs> Miami Beach. Sometimes it takes a minute. It takes a minute. Yeah. There's a slight drag. And if they can't find a meeting, they will give you Zoom options that are going on at that time. I assure you, it's wor it works. It just There's a slight drag or there's some... Yeah, zip code. So wherever we are, like you can put in Washington tonight when we finally get out of here and we got some stuff. That we, well, well, that's not going to happen tonight. Maybe tomorrow. Wherever you are, you put in the zip code where you are. It finds the five closest meetings then. Guys, I've taken up all my time. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Who wants some candy? Yeah. Coming at you. Coming at you. Come. It's hard to throw in a jacket. Ah. <laughs> that one's heavy. I don't want to throw it too far. All right. Thank you, Gary. I will tell you that text is awesome. I've actually used it while I've been up here. Um, I actually had to get the number from Matthew. So, um, But yes, so up next, we've got Matthew McFarlane. Uh, his sobriety date is 417 of 18. First house he lived in was Oxford House Coronet, did I say that right? In Fort Worth, Texas. He currently lives in Austin, Texas and works as an outreach worker. Woo! Welcome, Matthew. All right, you guys, fair warning, I'm nowhere near as funny as this guy. Um, I will say I am jealous of his group me. He's only got one on there, I probably got 15,000, so I want to be like you when I grow up. Uh, so today we're going to talk about email etiquette, and we're going to go over some stuff in the Google suite. Um, so most states are going to have an email system, uh, and if you don't, you can make one, but most states are going to have an email system, and we in Texas, and I know in a lot of the other areas, we send out departure emails when somebody leaves a house. 
And uh, there's a couple things that we can do with these departure emails. We can keep track of somebody that's left and maybe their house hopping. We can even use it as a debt collection system and, and see who owes money when they leave a house. Um, we can use it to say that, you know, one of our long-term members that has been very successful has, has left and uh, we wish them the best and, and say that they've successfully moved out. Um, so there's a lot of uses that we can use this email for, uh, but one thing that we want to make sure is that we're using it the right way and uh, we're not bashing somebody on their way out. We're not maybe uh, guessing on what might have happened, speculating on circumstances that might be around a certain situation and departure. Um, and we want to just make sure that what we're doing is, is, is you know, being... We're not bashing somebody. We want to make sure that we're just laying out the facts and, and going through that. So I've got some examples of, uh, you know, some good ones and bad ones. You could try and read through that X if you want to. Um, some of these I found and just changed some names up. Some of these I just made up myself. Um, but, uh, you know, when somebody's leaving, we're going to just want to, we're going to want to stick to the facts. There's a couple things that we got to make sure that we're doing to make sure that this works efficiently. When we're sending the email, and again, if your state doesn't have this, this is something that you can work towards getting. It's, it, it's, it's all pretty, Google is free for everybody, and we can make it work. Uh, in Texas, we have a, a group that includes all the houses in the state, an email group, and so you can type... Uh, into that email group and have an email get sent out to every house in the state immediately. Um, one of the reasons that this works and one of the ways that this works is that we have to be able to have some uniformity to be able to search when, when we're trying to, to look for somebody. If we're interviewing somebody and on their application says they've lived in an Oxford house before, well, we're, we're going to want to go to the email and look and see what the circumstances were around that departure. Uh, the easiest way for this to be done is for there to be uniformity in our subject line. Uh, in the Google search function, you can find stuff in bodies of emails. It's a lot more difficult. So if we have the person's first and last name or any nicknames in the subject line, it'll make that search function a lot easier. And one thing that we always want to say, we just want to call it a departure. Uh, in the body of that email, it's pretty simple. We just want, again, facts only. We're going to put the name Matthew McFarlane was expelled from University Hills on the date for relapse. He left owing this amount to the house. And we're not saying that, uh, you know, I was doing what I was doing. And, you know, we're not, again, we're not, we're not here to lay out all the details. We just want to say what happened, right? Somebody relapsed. They left owing this amount. Um... Let's see here, we have, this is a voluntary, an option, uh, you know, an a, a example of a voluntary departure, right? Somebody just left. Um, somebody can leave my house and I have a pretty good idea of what they're going to do, right? But I don't need to put that in the email. Uh, somebody could have left the house and there might have been a whole bunch of other circumstances involved with that voluntary departure. I don't need to put that. We can just say this person left. What works about this is when, when, when a house is looking this up, and they, if they really want to know, they'll reach out to you, and they'll figure it out. Uh, but that's up to that house to, have to get to do that if they want to. Another example that we have here is uh, disruptive behavior. And um, I don't need a laundry list of what the, what the disruptive behavior was. We don't need bulletproof, uh, but uh, yeah, we just need to say what the circuit, you know, disruptive behavior. That's cool. Again, if a house wants to know, if this happened, if you were interviewing somebody and on their application, they said they lived in an Oxford house and you searched their email, their name in the email and you saw disruptive behavior, who would call, who would send an email, who would reach out and just... Maybe be curious. Who doesn't care? It's okay. It done, it, you know, it's all okay. Um, but we don't need to bash somebody and air it out and, and put it all out there. It's just, it, it's, it's not a good look. Um, so again, have a group. Get a group set up. If you don't have a group, 
work with somebody, we can work together and, and, and get something set up. For that subject line, it's very important. We gotta have their name in there. For this search function to work properly, we've, we've gotta have something that it can go off of. Have their name, if they got a nickname, put it in the middle. Um, and then in the body of that email, just make sure we're sticking to facts. We're not bashing people. We're not embellishing. We're not speculating. We just want the basics of the situation. Uh, so up next, we're going to talk about some uh, Google Suite stuff. And again, this is most houses. I know that there are some houses out there that don't use the you know, Oxford House Gmail system. But uh, most of us do, right? Everybody, who raise you all have a... .us Gmail account, okay, so most of us have this. Um, there's some pretty cool stuff that you can use within this Google Suite uh, that, that's actually good for your houses. You can do some, some pretty cool stuff. We got, you know, of course we have Gmail, we have Google Sheets, we've got Chrome, the Drive, Google Docs, and Google Calendar, right? These are all applications within that Google Suite, and there's a couple more that I'm missing, but these are the main ones. And so, uh, let's see if all of this will pull up. Oh, we went too far. A little delay there. All right, kind of blurry. So, when we're starting off, we have your drive. It's going to be that triangle, right? Uh, we can search for some pretty cool stuff on there. You really don't have to be. Uh, you know, specific. You can put some really vague search terms. You can type training and it's going to pull up a whole bunch of stuff. And you're in some older areas and you have some, you know, user created content, you're going to have a whole bunch of things pop up. I know in some of the older houses that I got, that I go to that have, that have been around a lot longer, their, their drives are going to have a whole lot of things on there. And I mean, you can search for, for terms. You, maybe you read it in a manual. Maybe you, maybe you read something in a manual and you can't remember exactly what it is or where it is or what document it's from, but you remember something about it. You can type that into the search bar and it's probably going to pull up something that is included in what, what, what's in there. Um, over here we've got kind of where to find it all. So this, this top pa page is going to be all pretty much the same screen. So if you're on your email, if, you just, if your home screen is your Gmail, the dots, the nine dots at the corner of that screen, that's where you're going to find all the access to these. Down here I've got uh, just an example of our EES calculator. Most of y'all have probably seen that. And a few of y'all might have even encountered where you try and edit it and it won't let you. And it's because it says view only. Um, I was requested, somebody requested to me put this in here because they've gotten a million emails requesting access to edit. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's going to take a long time. I know that when, if it happens to me, it's, it, I'm catching it at the end of the day, and you've probably gotten over it already and don't care anymore. But you can do this yourself. All you got to do is click the File button. I've got it right here. And you can make a copy of this document, and now it's yours. Now you can edit it. You can change it. You can do whatever you want with it. Uh, and this goes for anything on there. I actually keep a... Uh, manual on my phone, an Oxford House manual. I had to make a copy of it, and I can now highlight it on my phone. I keep it, I keep it in my phone. I can pull it up at any time, but these original documents, you can't change them. You make a copy, it's yours. You can do whatever you want to it. Um, Google Calendar. I don't have a, a screen up on Google Calendar. What I've seen is chapter accounts set up Google calendars and invite their houses to them. You can set up a house calendar for your, for your house and you can put all your events, just kind of what he was saying in GroupMe. You can, you can have your chapter meetings, your HSC meetings. You can have any of your other subcommittee meetings on there, state association meetings, house meetings if you need to. Hopefully we all remember when those are. Uh, Google Calendar comes in really handy. Google Docs is basically a, a, a Google version of Microsoft Word. Google Slides is a Google version of Microsoft PowerPoint. Uh, Google Sheets is a Google version of Microsoft Excel. So we have access to all of this. It's 100% free. Wow, I used all my time. Uh, didn't expect that. Use it. It's there. Type, type stuff up. Thank you. All right. Um, I did want to clear one thing up real quick um, from Gary's presentation. Please do not do house votes over group me. 
if you need a House vote, call an emergency meeting on Group Me, but you need to be in a House meeting to vote. Um, and then one thing I did want to ask about the, um, the tracking, Matthew, is if somebody, let's say Joe Bob left my house and he owes $240 and he pays that back, so do you just put a new email with his name? So yeah, uh, man, I should, I should have put it up there. There's a, a, a guy in, 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 in my area and he has been paying back and I've been watching him as he's moved into another house about three months ago. I've been watching weekly as he's been paying back and this other house is, is updating that email, replying back to that same email that, that they sent when he left and saying, this individual sent us 40 bucks. This is his new balance. Thank you so much. The next week, this individual sent us 40 bucks. Thank you. Um, and so that's how that would work. And it's, it's actually really cool to see that. Um, and it, 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 you, you don't normally see it. And it's a good way to point that out. But yeah, that's how you would do that. That's awesome. If you don't use the microphone, the people on the screen can't hear you. There's a microphone on the table right in front of you. All right. He's going to say that again so that people on the stream can say? Or can you hear him? All right. So can you hear me? Uh, what was I saying? Yeah. If somebody leaves and they owe you money, they pay, when they start paying you back after they've moved into a new house, send emails out. Reply back to it. To tell them how much they paid. Put their new balance. I've seen it happen. It works good. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Some candy. Who's awake? Oh. 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 Coming in hot. <laughs> Got him. All right. <laughs> All right. Up next, we've got Jessica Ruiz. Uh, Jessica's sobriety date is January 25th of 2019. Her first house. Her first house was Oxford House Copperfield in in Austin, Texas, where she currently lives and serves as senior outreach coordinator for South Texas. Good morning, everybody. All right. I will try to talk fast because when I was sitting down to think about what to tell you guys about technology, I sat down with my technology, which is really just my laptop and my phone and my printer and thought about what I have used as an Oxford House member, a chapter officer, and as an outreach worker. Um, and this QR code right here, I'm going to run through a lot of apps I have on my phone really fast. So if you grab that QR code, it'll show you a list of what resources I'll talk about today. Um, it, this first group right here is like a recovery group of apps. I have apps to find AA meetings and NA meetings, and the NA app also links me to Just For Today that I like to read every single morning. Um, this My Spiritual Toolkit was my first recovery-related app that I downloaded out of treatment. Um, it has a, a sobriety counter. It has a link to AA's daily reflections if you want to read that. It also has tools for... 10th uh, step and inventory tools, even though my, my sponsor made me handwrite all those things out to her. Um, each day is that center app in the first group. That is a women's daily reading app that is my favorite. I read that every single morning. I highly recommend it. Each day, a new beginning. Um, and for mindfulness, I have explored Calm, Insight Timer, Headspace, and then on a side note, my fitness pal tracks my calories and exercise. Um, <clears throat> this next group helps me with making flyers and savvy announcements to post on the Facebook group. Um, flyer making tools that are free and easy to use on your phone are Poster Maker, Adobe Express, and Canva. I use Event Create to manage events and fundraisers. That's my new, um, I guess my new technological website that I like to use now at, over Eventbrite. Um, and then Facebook events, too, like Gary was talking about. I encourage you guys to really use that. I've, I've finally just really gotten into using that. Um, when you use Facebook events, it is a good platform, and, and I recommend that you start your event at least a month out before whatever it is you're planning, um, if it's a fundraiser or a training or something like that, because it creates a platform for you to post pictures and announcements and drum up that attendance that you want, right? Um, it'll give you a head count of how much food to buy for people who are RSVP. Um, let's see, and apps to find jobs. I've got Indeed, LinkedIn, 
There's an app called Variable. It's spelled very able. It gives you real-time manufacturing and warehouse, same-day opportunities nearby. Um, and even on Facebook in Austin, we do a hashtag, Hire Oxford, on our Facebook page. Um, so we encourage members and um, other people in our recovery community to get on our area Facebook page, post job uh, opportunities with the hashtag, Hire Oxford. And when newcomers come into our house, we get them connected to that Facebook page to connect with their community. And when they say, I need a job, we say, go search, hashtag Hire Oxford. It pulls up all the job opportunities that are specifically targeted for people in recovery. Um, so if you don't use that system, I recommend that. Uh, we already talked about GroupMe for group chats. And YouTube is helpful to learn how to do all these things. So we're running through some technological tools today. Use YouTube for how-to videos. Um, you know, for anything, like how to change your home's air filter if you need to do that um, regularly. Uh, but you can also use it. I had an idea five days ago, five or six days ago, about um, using from the Google Suite um, a Google Forms to create a survey, a survey that every time a chapter or a regional association had elections, wouldn't it be great if we could just push a clickable survey link so they can put their name, their position, their house, and their phone number, and it just auto-populate a contact list that you could send to everybody, right? I think that would be very easy. Um, and if you don't know how to do that, I'm sure YouTube could tell you how to do that. <laughs> um, and then, of course, there's Zoom. We've all become very familiar with that. But um, there's the free 40-minute Zoom. You know, you can use that to maybe do chapter ag agenda meetings real quick with your chapter officers before chapter meetings, um, or even use it. If you don't have access to FaceTime, you can use it to connect with loved ones. Um, and then there's just some general productivity things I like to use all the time, which is uh, the calculator, of course, the dictionary, the Merriam-Webster dictionary actually even has some word games that I, I, I play on it. Uh, Grammarly helps me seem smarter than I am by Checking my grammar and spelling while I type. I use Dropbox and Google Drive to retrieve all my files on my devices, including my phone. The scanning apps um, are probably my favorite, TurboScan and Adobe Scan. I use TurboScan for everything. I've completely abandoned using a printer scanner for anything. The, the app uses your phone's camera. The images come out way better. You can make multiple pages very easily and just send it wherever you need to go from your phone. Um, let's see, let me move on from apps. All right, I'm going to switch gears and tell you about these two great resources that I think we should all be using. Um, of course, there is OxfordHouse.org. Um, this is our website where we can find links to the manuals. You can find links to your state's website, which has even more resources. Of course, it'll give you a link to the viability calculator, which helps us calculate our EES, which is variable, right? That changes every time something happens. Our rent increases, membership leaves. Um, you use that viability calculator to every single month in your house meeting to decide uh, how much you should be paying to cover the expenses that it costs to live there. Um, there's uh, links to paperwork, forms, and documents needed in your house, chapter, and state levels. Um, and a link to the vacancies website, which you're going to hear about in here in a second from Tim. Um, and you can explore this. Be nosy. Go to other states' websites and look and see what they've got going on. See what resources they use. Bring it back to your area if you'd like to. Um, and then SAMHSA.gov. SAMHSA stands for Substance Abuse and Mental Health Administration, and they're a pretty big deal in our world, okay? Um, the website is beneficial in finding resources in your area related to recovery and mental health. Uh, you know, a guy called me the other day and said, hey, I need to get into your detox facility, and I don't run a detox facility, and I told him that, but I stayed on the phone with him because I wanted to be a part of getting him to that next step on his journey, whatever that looked like. So I asked him some questions. Hey, do you got any money? Where do you live? Where would you like to go? Um, I asked him about money because that helps guide me on if I need to find state-funded resources for him or if he has insurance. Um, but I took the time to try to get the information he needed on his journey so he would remember that kindness, do what he needed to do, and call me back when he was ready for Oxford House, right? Um, the SAMHSA website also is a great place for you guys to go search for area treatment centers based on zip code to reach out to to schedule presentations to help fill those vacancies in your area. Uh, 
All right, surveys. Um, surveys are very important, and they're an important technological tool that we use all the time right now, even in Oxford House. Um, we, in, in most of our states, we do monthly housing summary surveys. Uh, we do annual surveys. The data collected from these surveys is absolutely vital to furthering our cause. I know it can seem annoying, but I, I want to encourage you guys to take the time to give accurate responses. It's only good if the data is good, right? Um, they give us a voice to explain why of things. So we say it all the time in Oxford House, use your voice. Surveys give us the opportunity, us being the people in recovery who are struggling with finances, legal troubles, housing, or not even those that are struggling, but those that have made it through that struggle to success. We want to hear about that success. We want to share that success with the world. Look at us. We're doing good, and we can prove it. Um, they're usually quick and easy and anonymous. They gather snapshots and public opinion. Um, they're the most efficient tool to collect this data that we need. Um, we do follow-up surveys. We repeat them regularly, and we do that because there could be a change in trends, or maybe there's no change at all. You know, what seemed really important yesterday is not as important in our world today, or maybe based on the data we collected, um, you know, a new resource was cultivated, that uh, the past surveys changed the landscape, and we need to capture that. So Oxford House has continued to catapult to greater prominence by the data it collects and shares. It gives our community a louder voice and helps that voice be heard when we put hard numbers behind it. It really does play a significant role in our expansion, recognition, and integration into the community. So when you get requests to take surveys related to Oxford House or not, related to recovery housing from the community, I encourage you to take the 20 seconds, maybe two minutes, that it takes to participate in that survey and use your voice and be a part of affecting change. Okay, I'm almost done. Finally, some reminders on practicing good internet etiquette. So uh, we use all the tools that you hear about today. Use them to socialize with other people in recovery. Publicize your house and your chapter achievements. Celebrate those recovery milestones. Share information on events, unity, and resources, but do not use the tools to assassinate someone's character. When you're feeling grouchy or resentful, and avoid posting discriminatory, religious, political, and shaming comments. The things you post on group chats and social media is forever, even if you think that it goes away or it gets deleted. Somebody's taken a screenshot of that and sent it to your local outreach worker. I call that Exhibit A. <laughs> Um, also, you know, being in recovery, we are people of the most dynamic change. I mean, the way we feel today is going to change very quickly. We're going to, you know, use tools, recovery tools, to change how we feel. Um, so take a minute. Cons reconsider what you want to say when you post anything. Try to stay positive. Be a good netizen. Practice good netiquette. And there's that list of that QR code again real quick. And that's all I got. I'll leave that QR code up for a minute if you guys want to take pictures of it. Um, yeah, what she was talking about and, and also what, what Matthew was talking about, I mean, the power that we have in the technology we have these days um, is pretty amazing. You know, we've got it, we've got it made like between that that number you can text and, and get the meetings around you, that meeting finder app, um, all your, your literature you can get for whichever fellowship you are a part of. Um, I will suggest you do a, a written 10th step, um, get pen to paper. Um, <laughs> look at Jesse. <laughs> um, no, he, he's who holds me accountable to do mine. Um, but yeah, let's, uh, let's throw out some candy. Let me, get, let me get one that'll make it to you. Oh, oh, the tip drill. Gotcha. Who said goosey? <laughs> and all right. All right, so up next, I'm going to bring you guys up the, uh, the man. Oh, you, you just coming to get one? Yeah. He's... <laughs> <laughs> Must be a Cowboys fan. <laughs> All right. 
I'm gonna bring up the man, the myth, the legend, Tim Deal. Uh, his sobriety date I really like this is 11 1 11. Um, first house he lived in was Oxford House Bradley Beach in Bradley Beach, New Jersey, and he still lives in Bradley Beach and serves as the director of technology for OHI. Please welcome Tim Deal. Hey everybody, Tim Addict. And uh, I am also a person in long-term recovery, and what that means for me is now I just eat too much and spend too much. <laughs> um, it also means I haven't had a drink or a drug since 11 one um, Yeah, so I'm excited to be here with you all. Um, so, you know, I personally was, you know, one of the lucky people when I got sober 10 years ago to come in and be given, you know, the, what I call the speedball to recovery, which is, uh, you know, the 12 steps in an Oxford house. Um, and so I was given a place that I could stay as long as I wanted um, and kind of focus on my recovery, go through the 12 steps and, you know, kind of re, uh, rearrange my life and have a personal transformation that allows me to live on a different basis today. Um, and so, uh, you know, I try to do whatever I can you know, with the opportunity that I've been given, because uh, I really feel like I've been given a second chance at life, um, like a whole new life, and uh, I'm sure a lot of you feel the same. And so, uh, you know, one of the things that I tried to do um, early on was to create the, the vacancy system. Um, so the way that that happened is I just started going to my chapter meeting, um, you know, because I said, hey, you know, the new guy's gotta go. And I went there and they made me the HSR, um, and so they told me, like, listen, you got to make sure that people are, you know, updating their vacancies. And, um, and it was a major problem at the time uh, because you needed a username and password to log in. And if you forgot that, it was kind of a pain to reset it and get a new one. You'd have to remember yourself to go in and update it, and which people just forgot to do all the time. I mean, I know for me, I'm, I need to put everything in my calendar. I forget everything, um, even today. Um, and so... Um, I started calling all the houses each week um, and kind of, you know, writing down their vacancies. And then I started putting together a list of treatment facilities in the area and sending it out to the treatment facilities. And so I was doing that manually for a while. Then I started texting people to get that information. Um, and, uh, and then I kind of had the idea of like, hey, like maybe I could, you know, write some code to have this happen automatically. Um, and that's kind of how the idea of the vacancy system was born, you know, because I was too lazy to do it myself anymore. Um, and so, uh, and so, yeah, so I ended up, you know, deploying it to my chapter and then to, you know, the state of New Jersey, um, and then other states started wanting to get on there. Uh, and then before I knew it, um, you know, Paul Malloy reached out to me and said, hey, I want to hire you to deploy this nationwide, and that's why we have the system today. Um, and so, you know, uh, I know that, you know, at this point, you know, everybody's been using the vacancy system for a long time. Um, but I know, you know, sometimes there's little features tucked in that maybe people don't know about. So I was just going to go over, you know, just kind of like a brief coverage of like the vacancy system, system and some of its features. And so you might know everything already, or, you know, you might learn something new about it. Um, and, uh, so I'm going to bring that up for you. Oh, there we go. Let's see if I can exit right. Nope. <laughs> there you go. All right, there we go. Um, so you guys have probably all seen this. You know, a lot of you probably, when you moved into an Oxford house, this is how you found it. Um, so, you know, some of the basics, you know, it's got filters for state, county, and gender. gender. Uh, there's a checkbox for show only vacancies. You can search for a particular house by any of the fields that you see here. Um, and then you can enter a location and see the houses that are closest to you. Um, if you click on any particular house, um, it'll bring you to the Google Maps uh, for that address. So if you need to drive there, you can just go there. Um, it'll also show you where it is. You can see the street view. Um, and then 
there's a how-to page that has a couple of, sorry, I'm not trying to right click. Um, so there's a video for houses and a video for applicants. Um, there's the apply online page, um, which is where you know, people can go in and when they fill out the application and they submit it, um, at the bottom of this, what they're gonna do, let me see if I can go to the bottom. Um, it says, where are you looking for a house? So you select the state, you can select you know, multiple counties if you want, you know, the gender, and when you hit submit, what it's gonna do is it'll email you a copy of the application, it'll email the application to the houses in the areas that you selected that have an opening, um, and it'll also send a text message to those houses that says, hey, you know, this person applied online, it gives you their phone number so you can go ahead and call them right there. So how many people have received like an applied online text or email? Okay, so quite a lot. Um, so yeah, so that feature, like I actually just, I didn't know if anybody was gonna use it. Um, I kind of just added it on. I said, you know, I think this could be useful to kind of let an applicant get their, you know, phone number out to a bunch of houses at once and kind of, you know, have them get some calls. You know, like I feel like that's pretty welcoming, right? Um, and so, you know, I think the one thing that we gotta make sure is that, you know, we are, you know, calling those people, you know, that we're getting missed calls or voicemails and stuff like that, that we're returning those phone calls. Um, you know, I had a sponsor recently that had a little bit of trouble getting some calls back. You know, I know people have jobs and they're busy and stuff like that, but, you know, we gotta try to be there for the new person so that they can get in. Um, and then, last thing I'll show is the, uh, the house login page. So one of the problems that I had to think about fixing when I made the vacancy system was the username and password problem that I talked about. Like what happens if the person that had that moves out? You know, how are, they, how are people gonna get in to be able to update their contact person and stuff like that? And so um, what we have here is, so that, you know, the username is just your house name. I tried to keep it simple. So if there's spaces in your house name or anything, you just type it in exactly as your house name is with the spaces and everything. Um, capitalization doesn't matter. And then, you know, your password. But like, let's say you forgot that, right? So I'm gonna show you that process right now of how to reset it. Um, all right, so the house that I have set up for this is called Bradley Test House. Um, so I just typed in the username in here, but I don't know the password, so I'm gonna do click to reset password. And so here what you're gonna do is enter your house phone number and then click the call me button, right? So I'm gonna do my number here. Oh, I think I did a typo. All right, so let me take out my phone before I hit call me. Okay. Let's do call me. <coughs> All right, so it says calling. Oh, and so you can see here I have a phone call coming in. So I'll put it on speakerphone. Hello? Hello? Bradley Test House. Your password has been reset successfully. Your username is Bradley Test House, and your password is 126596. Again, your username is Bradley Test House, and your password is one two six five nine six. You're welcome. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> so I just type that in here. I click sign in, and then you can see here's like the actual page where you can manage your contact person. Um, so contact person, you know, just first name and cell phone number. You can set up when your interview day and time is. Um, you know, how many vacancies you currently have, if you want to change it there. You can change your passwords, you know, it's something that you'll remember. Um, and then you, when you're done, you just hit save. Um, so if any of you are currently relying on like an outreach worker or someone else to update your contact person, stuff like that, you don't need to. You know, you can very easily do it yourself. Just put in your house phone, phone number, it'll call you, and like you said, saw, you can just log right in, update your contact person. Um, now, a couple of things that it also does is, let's say your contact person moves out and, uh, you know, they keep getting the text, right? So usually what happens at that point is they're, you know, like, F off or, you know what I mean? Like, you know, I, I don't live there anymore. And, um, and so I recognize a bunch of different keywords, um, including a lot of curse words. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and so at that point, I send the message that says, um, 
you know, hey, if you no longer want to receive these messages, please text the word decline. So they text the word decline. And what it does is it takes their contact number off. It sets the contact number temporarily to the house number. Um, and then it places a phone call to your house number with a recording of me telling you to update your contact person. Um, <laughs> Um, yeah, and uh, I think that's, that's, that's most of it. Um, now, one of the things that, you know, actually a couple of things I added, you know, like in the last few years, um, there's now like a map feature, which I'm sure a lot of you have seen, so you can go down here and click show map. Oh, that's not good. All right, well, that's my job to fix, so. Uh, <laughs> all right. Well, I've got homework now. Um, but yeah, so basically, like, normally what it does is it shows a map where, you know, there's different clusters, and you can kind of zoom into a certain area, and you can see all the houses in that area. Uh, you can click on each of them, and it brings up a little bubble where you can see their information. Um, so that's a nice way to find them, too. And then also for... Um, women and children, men with children houses, you could see that it now displays like two different vacancy numbers. So that way you can see like, you know, how many, because for certain houses like in New Jersey, like they'll have like one women with children with child spot and then the other spots in the house will only be for women. I know it's not like that in every state, but for the states where those two numbers will be different, we kind of want to display that. So for a woman that's looking for a spot with a child, she can actually find which houses have that now. Um, and so if you get one of those text messages, you just reply with like the two numbers with a slash in between, and then it'll kind of update both numbers for you. Um, and the last thing I want to say, you know, I know we're gonna have like a questions and answers uh, section next. Um, if there's something with the vacancy website where you, know, you think that a certain feature would be helpful, um, I mean that, you know, two vacancy thing, you know, uh, for the women and children that I just talked about, that was someone's idea that I got here you know, from the, from the conference, or from the convention. They came up and they said, hey, you know, it'd be really helpful if we had the two numbers. And I said, okay, you know, and I, I put that on my to-do list and then I got it done. So, you know, if you guys have, you know, ideas for things like that where we can make the system better, function better, um, you know, please let us know. You know, I can't have all the good ideas. So thanks for letting me share. <laughs> How cool is that? I mean, I know when I moved into my first Oxford house, I was in treatment and they just handed me a printout of numbers. And, they, and, and the vacancy site then was me calling each house, hey, do you have any vacancies? Um, yes, so thank you, Tim. Um, do we have any questions? Your name was, your, your hand was up first? I'll, I'll repeat it. Yeah. Jesse, can you make sure that mic's on? It's locked on. So I've been doing a lot of walking. Yeah. All right. Hey, I'm BB. I'm an addict. Um, so what if you don't have a house phone or you don't know your house phone number? Can you just put a cell phone for the vacancy website? Is this working? Okay. Um, yes, yeah, so if you temporarily need to put, like, another cell phone number, you can but you can't use the same cell phone number for both. It can't be, you can't use the same cell phone number for both the contact number and the house number. They have to be two different numbers. Um, so it can be two cell phones if you need it to be, um, but we do recommend that every house have a house phone number because that's sort of like the consistent point of contact mm -hmm. no matter what else happens with the different contact people. Yeah, and we that's were just we opening a brand new house, and so until we got all of that established, we wanted to still make sure that the vacancy website was updated, so that's what I was asking. Yeah, so if it's temporary, then definitely you can use two different cell phone numbers, and that'll work fine. All right, cool. Thanks. Hello, James from Virginia. Um, hey, James. Hello. Um, I think maybe it would be helpful to have houses that... Um, and maybe that you need to get this information from the house, but like uh, that require a vaccine. Um, there's at least like two houses in my chapter that do. Um, so anyway. Okay, thank you. So I'm Jason. I'm, uh, I'm from Washington. My sober date is 92818. Um, my question is, I'm the state association rep for uh, Spokane. 
And okay. <laughs> oh, now I feel like I'm in court. <laughs> I didn't do it. Uh, yeah, I lied. <laughs> so, but I have, so I, we're talking with the chapter chairs in the various houses. Um, I wanted them to download GroupMe or uh, WhatsApp and they get, oh, well, my phone gets viruses or I get these strange texts, you know, and all of that stuff. Is that true or are they just, um, we're on live TV, Amy. Are they, is that like, you know what I mean? Yeah. So are you asking that if they have their phone number on the no, vacancy they download website? the app. Group me. Oh, group me. Group me or WhatsApp that they are getting like. Um, Spam. Yeah, I guess. Like from porno sites and. That's, that's yeah. probably true. And you mix 10 years of methamphetamine use, you're going to start to, you know, but most cell phones now come with malware. All right. And I, I just, I, do, I don't know. You definitely can't parallel pornography with GroupMe. GroupMe is very safe. It's, All right. Yeah. Oh, this is on the live stream. <laughs> All right. We might need a new data specialist for the... <laughs> But that was that was a question, and I said, "Well, I don't believe it." But and you can't you can't force anybody to do anything, and it, there's yeah. some people that don't want to participate like that right. with the house, and it, it happens. Yeah. You know, that's all why right. we don't vote by text. Yeah, no. So, all right, thank you. Thank you. Uh, hello, my name is Curtis from Washington State, uh, locally. So I drove in um, with the vacancy website. I don't know if my house number, like for my house, is correct. Is there a way to change it? Yes, so um, that's one of the few things that you can't change yourself. Um, but if you speak to your outreach worker, they can update your house phone number for you. But the way you can check first before you, you know, ask them about it is to just find your house on the vacancy website, check the house phone number column and see if it's correct. If it's correct, you can just leave it. If it's not, just reach out to your outreach worker and they can update it for you. Thank you. From. And I did, sorry, um, I had one question about that. I, I, that's a new feature you added where you can call me. Um, does that number have to match the house number or could somebody just put in their own cell phone? It has to be the house number. Okay, perfect. My question was when it comes to searching a departure, how broad is that search gonna be on Google? Is it global or is it gonna be state, chapter? Um, it's, yeah. It just depends on what kind of system you have set up in your area. Okay. So for Texas, for instance, and that's really the only one that I have experience oh. personally with, but I know that other states out there do something similar. For Texas, it goes to all the houses in Texas, as long as they're sending it to yeah. that Texas houses group. Okay. And, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those things, uh, it only works if everybody does it. That's the other thing. It, it, I see it all the time in my areas. We use GroupMe, you know, in my areas. And I'll see people get kicked out of GroupMe. And to me, what that means is that person just left or relapsed or whatever. And I'll see them get kicked out of the GroupMe. I won't see an email departure go through. Um, and so if this person owed any money or something like that or had some sort of departure that maybe another house might want to know about, they're not going to be able to find that out. So, again, it's 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 only going to go to the group that it's sent to. There's currently not a nationwide type system. You're not really, it, it, I'm sure it does happen. It's not going to be the most prevalent. You'll see house hopping in cities or cities close by, not crossing your state lines that much. So in, in the header of the email of a departure, are you putting the list of, on that destination, you're putting the list of all the houses in the chapter in the state, or is what is, what's the destination when that char, char, departure email goes out? So it's a, it's a setting within Google... Uh, within Gmail, right, and you have a contact book, mm -hmm. and you can create a group email list. Okay. And so that's what they're putting. In that two line, somebody has gone and created a Texas okay. Houses group that includes all of the emails for all of the houses okay. in Texas, and that's what they're, that's what they're doing. Okay. And so if you wanted to, in, in your area, if you wanted to do it for chapter or for maybe a regional or state association, you could actually take the time and type in, find a list and type in every house email in a group within Gmail and name it 
send it out to the houses in your area, and then you could start to implement a system like that and be able to keep track of departures and, 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 and Thank you. helpful. Yeah. Hi, um, my question is about the vacancies website. Um, so if you put on the website that you have zero vacancies, you, you don't continue to get applications. Um, what we do in our chapter, um, we like to still continue to get applications because we like to interview people and put them on a wait list. You never know what's going to happen. Is there a way to make it to where we can still receive applications even if we have zero vacancies on our website? Yeah, so I, I definitely think that um, that's something I can give some thought and I, I think it's a good idea. Um, you know, and one of the things, um, Matthew, that you just said, um, was that maybe you guys could get the email, um, but not the text. So in other words, you're not going to get an alert text saying, hey, this person applied online, but you'll still get an email so you have their application if you do have an opening come up. So I think, I think that could be a good idea. Um, also, one of the things that you guys don't see, but that currently happens, is if a person applies online to an area that doesn't have any vacancies uh, at all, what happens is it sends their application to the outreach workers that are responsible for that area, and then they can go ahead and try to work with that person to find an opening for them. So we do kind of have like a fallback for that person if there aren't any vacancies in any of the houses. Um, but otherwise, up until this point, it's only gone to the houses that have vacancies currently. But I, I will give that some thought, and I think that's a good idea. Thank you. We require every one of our houses to put at least one so that we get, we continue to get applications. But then it's kind of frustrating for people. They're like, well, you say you have a vacancy, and we're like, right. no, we don't. Sorry. Yeah, I would so. say I would recommend reporting, like, your accurate vacancy number. Um, and like I said, I will take that home and give it some thought. And maybe, like I said, you'll still get the email, but not the text. That would be great. Thank you. Hey, I'm Jesse. Hi, Jesse. Yeah. So um, I've been in quite a few houses, and the majority of them, wanted me to have some sort of foundation in recovery. You know, they were already established, had members that have been there for several years doing the darn thing to teach people. And currently I'm in a house that's, uh, it opened up like mid-March and since April we've had 13 guys. And a lot of the people are brand new with no foundation yet. And I've noticed that when they come in, it's like three days, a week later, they're asking questions, or no, not necessarily asking questions, but they'll be like, here with the girlfriend, and they're like, what do you mean she can't spend the night? <laughs> like, well, it was in the rules that you signed, you know? <laughs> you know, and, and, or any of these questions, you know, that are simply in the application, the paper application that we have. So what I was wondering is, like, with group me and you were talking about the 60-minute videos, like, is there any way there could be some sort of, like, interactive piece, like, not necessarily, like, a test or anything, but, like, you kind of watch a video, or you have some sort of in information, and then, like, a multiple choice, like, yes, I understand my curfew is 11 p.m. until I pay my rent. I've been there like for 30 days. Something you know? outside the newcomer packet? Well, like, the newcomer packet included in this, like, more interactive, because if you're just reading it and like signing it a lot of people aren't even reading it so if you have something that you actually have to go through and like check something where you're interacting with it you probably retain the information a little more you know what i'm saying Just, uh, get with me later jesse right. i can help you we can do that it can be done yeah exactly yeah <laughs> it'll be a google form there's a quiz on the national google drive there you go all right uh hi i'm steven i'm from knoxville uh, so I work for a mobile app development company and all this, and you know, I'm in Knoxville. We got four chapters. There's a lot of pushback on emails. There's a lot of like I wanted. I'm the treasurer, and I like to put everything in digitally, and I had to push for three months to get that through. So what I've done is I was noticing how on our group chat, like on Facebook, they'll they'll put somebody on blast. Oh, Jim Bob left on five hundred dollars. Blah 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 blah. So I've got with my, my rep and we've put together a Google Doc where I put it all together and now I've got those four chapters together to where anybody can go in, like the president can go in and they can control F it and search that name. And we now do that with each applicant because some people are nervous and they start off going, no, 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 I'm not on there. I've never been in an Oxford house. Well, you have, you left Owen zero money, you left on good terms, I don't understand. So. <laughs> And our goal is to stretch this across Tennessee to where it's a just database. Now, 
and doing that versus the emails um, is, is the, do you think that the emails would be a better service, even though I'm in Tennessee and, you know, we, we avoid technology at all costs? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, here's the thing about the emails, right? Um, it's just information. In no way is a departure email that says somebody left, and even if they didn't send it the right way and said that they went crazy or something like that, in no way, no way is this intended to say this person should not get in another house. Right. If somebody owes a house $600, in no way is that in, in, intended to say, don't accept this guy, he owes $600. Right. Um, it's just to say, hey, be aware of this, right? Yep. See this here, bring this guy into your house, and help them develop so we don't have the same thing the next time. Well, that's the reason that I filter most of it through me because, you know, we're, we can get pretty redneck. All right. And <laughs> put some information that doesn't need to be there. So, you know, I'll, I'll get a text or something from another house and it'll say, like I said, Jim Bob left, the SOB left on $500. He did this and that. And so that happens in our area too. It crapped and it's just in the middle something of the floor. that we have to continually bring up, but right? Then, but then I put it in the Google Doc and just say, you know, Jim Bob left on $500 on this day due to relapse, due to money, due to whatever. So... To avoid, owner? huh? Are you the exclusive owner of the document? Uh, yeah, I've linked. There's the caveat. Mike. Oh, sorry. Yeah, Mike, they can't hear you. So if you're the exclusive owner of the document and God forbid something happened, you relapse, you get tired of Oxford House, you go away, there it is. Well, it, it, it is a lot. It's all like they hear that I work for a mobile app company. I'm like, I'm, I'm financial director, okay? That's the reason I'm the treasurer of my house. True. You know, the, they're the like, Gmail oh, you work in this area. You know, every fix my phone. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I, I think what they're trying to say, though, is, is by using the Gmail, because that, that, that the house has mm -hmm. set up already, if you were to go anywhere or be fed up with even just handling that document, mm -hmm. um, it would still be there with all the house emails. But, I mean, really, you got, you're trying something new. Right. So if it's working, oh, it is. It is. work it. Um, but just I, what I would suggest maybe is, is make sure you, you work on um, the continuation of the, the information. So forward everything to the house email, so to speak, just so that there's a backup and a trail. That, that would work. All right. Yeah. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm Bubba. I'm an addict. I'm Chapter HSR for Jackson, Tennessee, Chapter 15. My question is, um, I announced myself as Bubba. I, was, I wanted to ask about, you said, on the departure letters or even email etiquette. Um, when, you're, when you're typing somebody's name in that top line, I heard you say something about if they go by a nickname, um, first name in parentheses, nickname, or um, or even if you have two people with the same name, like in my house, how did, how is the correct way to put that in the email or in a in any kind of subject line with the names? You know, we're never gonna we're never gonna find a perfect way to do it. We just gotta do the best that we can. And you know, I mean, think about we're all humans. Say I just misspelled your name, you know? Yeah. Uh, and, and so it's just the best that we can work with, right? We, we want to do our best and hope that somebody else can do their best. It's never going to be foolproof or fail-proof. Um, and, and sometimes things are going to slip by. What I do and what I recommend is in that subject line, first name, last name, departure. If there's a middle, if there's a middle name, or maybe they go by a different name, or maybe they use their middle name or, or whatever, Put the names in the subject bar that you think might best work for them and uh, hope that when they put their application in six months later or whatever that looks like, that it's the same and they can think to look it up. So, so just an example is my name. My name is Boris Shelton, but I go by Bobo. I would put Boris, Boris Bobo Shelton. In parentheses? Yeah. Yeah, okay. All yeah, right, anyway, because 
what it's doing by putting it in the subject is when, when you're in uh, Gmail and you go to type in the search bar at the top, mm -hmm. it's searching through your subject line. It's also searching through the body of the email. So it's really just giving those um, the search terms so that I know, because like I'm Goose, but my, real, my government name is Greg. Mm -hmm. So they would put Greg Goose Wise. Um, so it's it really all it is, is is it's creating an easy way for Google Gmail to search for the names. So any way you, you guys want to put it, um, just so that when it is searched, um, it can be found. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Thank I think we have time for a couple more questions. We'll get through the four of y'all, and then we'll be done. Okay. And everybody that stays through the rest can come on up and get candy at the end. <laughs> All right, my name is Jason. Uh, first of all, thank you for making the system that allowed me to find uh, Oxford House Oakley, which is the house I live at, which is, um, <clears throat> I mean, I'm past 10 months sober. I'm going on a year. This is the longest it's ever been, and the reason I was able to find it was because I used that exact vacancy site. Um, so I owe you a debt of gratitude. In Oxford, I will always owe. Um, my question, I had uh, two questions. One, um, if a house is brand new, which is a, the case in our area, we have a brand new houses, how do they set up their email? Because, I mean, we try to help, but they are, it's, they're cut off from the resources and, you know, like we're doing what we can to help them, but... I mean, they need that information. It's vital to know who's been kicked out so that, you know, someone doesn't come and try to get into their house, you know, because without the email, they have no access to that information. What yeah. area? What? What area are you in? Uh, I am Lyle, Illinois, uh, okay. DuPage County. Gary's your dude. Gary Gardner. Yep. Oh, there we go. Now I'm putting the face to the thing. <laughs> My man. I really exist. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I, I was a little late, which I do apologize yeah. for. No, you're fine. Um, but, uh, okay, yeah, I'll get with so, you all. And can I, uh, I just want to wait. Yeah. Okay. Um, and just, just to an answer that more generally for everybody, right? So if you're in an area and there's a new house that doesn't have their information on the vacancy site or they don't have an Oxford House at US email address, you just need to speak to the admin for that area. Usually it's an outreach worker. And so they can go on, they have their own special login for the vacancy system where they can add new houses, edit existing houses. And so they can go ahead and add that house. They can get an Oxford House at US email set up for them. And then from that point forward, the house should be all set up. Um, now, another question I get sometimes is what happens if we forget our password for the oxfordhouse.us? Um, so the contact person for the house can actually just text the word email to that same phone number that they're getting the weekly text from, and it'll actually reset their password and text it to them. Nice, nice. Oh, and also just one quick suggestion. I don't know how hard this would be, but when we have people applying, they, they often will be like, can I come see the house? Um, perhaps maybe a virtual walkthrough that we could add that way they can kind of see what they're getting into without having to travel down um, so I would say there's a few ways that you could do that you know you could send them a picture you, you know a lot of times Google Maps will have the street view um, but also you can tell them like hey you know if you do come for an interview like you'll get to see the house you know um, yeah well a lot of that we get are currently in rehab I mean we do the best we can to get them there um, I'm just saying, you know, maybe that could be a suggestion for the future that you guys could do. Give virtual walkthroughs of the house. That way people can... Uh, Another one of the features of the Google Suite is called Google Meet. And it's a way that you can just have a free video call. Oh, okay. For sure. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you. Um, hello. I'm Matt from uh, Salisbury, North Carolina. Matt. So... Uh, I, have a, I don't know if this is the right place to ask, but I'm not sure where else it would be. Um, if you had, like, cameras in your house, is that where's the limits on privacy and conflict of interest? Tradition five. Uh, call your local outreach worker and um, sit down with your house and talk about Tradition 5. Yep. Thank you. 
Hi, I'm Joseph from Delaware. Um, I don't have a question. It was just something that I didn't hear and I kind of wanted to, to bring to light because it's something that like people who have been around in my area for a while still don't know. Um, and it's a feature that helps like my housing services. Um, so they'll go to like the last updated and click it and it you know drops it down from the most recent to, to not or vice versa. Um, so they can see like who's actually updating or not and then you know they can contact the house and you know make sure that you know the vacancies are accurate um, we recently had a house that hadn't been updated in like quite some time so it's like it's kind of a red flag so like let's check on them see what's going on maybe they just need to change the number um, and the number that texts you can be updated 24 7 like I could text it right now um, and it will I think it's like a 32 second that it takes to update the website, but a lot of houses in my area didn't know that. Like they just wait until Monday at six o'clock to uh, update their vacancies. Um, so it's just an opportunity to stay on top of your vacancies and make sure that they're accurate. Thank you. Hi there, I'm Gina from Connecticut and part because of Oxford House, I'll have two years on Friday. So Woohoo! Really grateful for that. Um, Thank you. Um, I have a kind of a twofold question. So, um, in Connecticut, I don't have an we don't have an outreach worker right now. Is there? So there's a web. We have like a ctoxfordhouse.org email address for like the director. But you're, are you saying that there's a .us email address that we should have as well? So every house should have their own oxfordhouse.us email address. Um, and if you don't. Um, just come up here, you know, we're about to close up, so you can just come okay. up here and talk to us, and we'll, we'll make probably sure you, just talk you guys to you. Up. That's yeah. easy. Thank you. Um, <laughs> and, but also, basically, the way that it should work is each house has their own OxfordHouse.us email address, and then there should be an administrator for your area that is in charge of adding new houses and stuff like that. Do you know who that is? If yes, not, I think it's Jerry. Jerry? Jerry Cole, probably. yeah. Okay. okay, so I actually, I know Jerry, so um, I can also talk to him just to make sure that he's okay with the Oxford House US email addresses and with adding new houses. Um, but yeah, if, if for whatever reason you don't have either of those things, Jerry would probably be the person to talk to, or you mm -hmm. can also talk to us. Um, there's also an, in, an info page, like if you go to OxfordHouse.org, you can do a contact submission mm -hmm. where you just put in your name and email and stuff like that, and then it'll actually come to the central people at the office. And so we can, you, we, we always answer those questions. And so if you ever have something like that, you can just go on there and then we'll make sure to get you to the right person. Thank you so much. No problem. All right. Thank you guys for joining us. Come on, get some candy.